Quite the last. Who is it? You know, what's his name? The writer? What writer? You know who I mean. Married that Southern Belle that was supposed to be the original Blackbird. Remember, they were such a beautiful couple. Pictures in magazines and papers. They used to do wild things like ride around on the top of taxis and jump into public fountains. Oh, I know the one. I've seen his stories in the Saturday Evening Post. He seems to write a lot about himself and his wife. That him? Oh, Arthur. What's the name of that writer that was carrying on in the observation lounge last night? Remember? Well, they say that when a highbrow meets a lowbrow walking along Broadway, soon the highbrow, he has no brow. Ain't it a shame? And you're to blame. What's the use of prohibition? You produce the same condition. Crazy rhythm, I've gone crazy too. your tablecloth. Not to worry, sir. No harm done. What about your sleeve? I'm all right. Shall I take a damp cloth to it, sir? No, no, I'm fine. Don't fuss, Cyril. Don't fuss. Anything more I can bring you, sir? What about you, madam? More coffee? We'll be out of your way as soon as the wine is gone. We're not keeping you, are we, Cyril? Not at all, sir. Beg pardon, sir, but the name is Sydney, actually. Sydney? Sorry, not Cyril. Sydney. Thank you, sir. Do you know who I am, Sydney? Why, yes, sir. You're Mr. Fitzgerald, sir. I'm F. Scott Fitzgerald. Yes, sir. The name is not unknown, even in your country. I expect you've heard of the great Gatsby. The great uh, Gatsby? Yes, I believe I have, sir. Something to do with munitions, hasn't he? Great Gatsby is a book. A book, sir? The London Times adored it. The Manchester Guardian said its author was the most gifted and promising of all the young American novelists. Books and Bookmen called it a huge advance over Mr. Fitzgerald's previous success, this side of paradise. Dear God. My wife has found her tongue. Yes, dear? Is it? Let's go. Very well. Chatterbox. You seem to be the last. I apologize. Please don't think badly of us. Uh, that's not necessary, sir. Not to you, perhaps. Think of it as answering my need rather than yours. Well, uh, thanks very much. Very generous. Not generous. Selfish. Selfish, sir? Selfish. See you tomorrow. Good night, sir. Madam? Good night, Cyril.
big. Love. How are you? I'm fine, fine. How are you? <laughs> I miss you. Zelda! Ah, Zelda. Who like an Icean bark of yore. Beautiful as ever. <laughs> what a gallant liar you are, John. Now, who is this mysterious lady in the Paris hat? This lady, sir, is my daughter. The renowned world traveler and champion croquet player. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour, monsieur. I hope you had a pleasant trip. Oui, j'ai fait un bon voyage, merci. You can speak English now, darling. We're home. Governess and a chauffeur. Now that's what I call slang. Philippe was a professional boxer before he took to the wheel. He's a good man to know. I got into a couple of pretty rough scrapes this summer. Where? Bars, where the hell do you think? I had the honor of being incarcerated on two separate occasions. Well, how's the trip otherwise? There was no otherwise. It was all booze and general unpleasantness. You and Zelda? Zelda has turned quiet. Did what? Quiet. Did you notice? I noticed something. We quarreled in Paris. Lord, how we quarreled. Unbelievable, the things we said to each other. Very ugly. She's been quiet ever since. Sometimes she doesn't speak for hours. Was it another woman? No. Did she? No, that's not the problem. Even when we say it is, it's never other people, it's us. Something about the way we are. Each man kills the thing he loves. <laughs> Don't quote Oscar Wilde to me, I've got a hangover. Can't you dredge up something appropriate from Ella Wheeler Wilcox or Edgar Guest? There were days when they hurt each other purposely, taking almost a delight in the thrust. What's that? The beautiful and damned, that's Scott Fitzgerald. You worked on this summer? A few short stories, nothing I'm proud of. Well, what about the new novel? I put my soul in hock if I could get six months free and clear to finish it. Well, as soon as you're settled in here, as soon as I get settled in here, I'll have to grind out another story to pay for this trip. I haven't even got an idea, let alone characters or a plot. I'm dry at the moment. Uh, you can tell me it's none of my business, but you and Zelda could cut down a bit on the high life, couldn't you? It's none of your business. You don't have to spend every penny you earn. We're way past that stage. We've already spent money I may never earn. I'm probably a year's income in debt already just to my agent and my publisher. How's the law racket? The law racket? That's a little slow right now. What's the matter with us, Biggs? Ten years ago, we thought we'd be millionaires by the start. These are the boom years. Why aren't we booming? All right. We're alive. We have that distinction, yes. Tom Griffin is dead. Did you know? No. Huh? He killed himself and his wife. Why? You tell me. I heard about Devereaux falling out a window. Falling or jumping. And George Markham getting beaten up in a speakeasy and crawling back to the Princeton Club to die. On the whole, not an auspicious year for Princeton men. Now, if you think about all that, you realize we're in pretty good shape. We're damn well off, in fact. Speak for yourself, John. Buffered with feathers of blue is waiting for you back in your home backyard.
back in your own backyard. Well, you can go to the east, go to the west, someday you'll come. Weary at heart, back where you started from. You'll find your happiness lies right under your eyes. Back in your own backyard. Chances are it's open. I arranged for a couple of cleaning ladies to come in this morning. They're probably upstairs. I told them to do the bedrooms first. Anyway, you're back at Ellerslie. Is something a little less cavernous, John. First time you saw it, when you first came to live here last year, you said it would bring you your exact words, a judicious tranquility. Judicious? That's a lawyer's word. That's what you said. I was wrong, dead wrong. It's too big and unfriendly. It's never brought us anything but unhappiness. It never will. It hates us. You'll find the castles in Spain through your window pane, back in your own backyard. You'll find your happiness lies right under your eyes, back in your own backyard. Back in your own backyard. Monsieur Vincent Fields as well? Oh, I told you earlier, I have to work tonight. Duma, I have to make money to pay your salary, vous comprenez? I uh, keep the car ready? Yes. The car ready, no. Now go away, go to bed. 
Mais vous en, Scram Monsieur se battait dans la guerre Se battait. I never got overseas. I missed the war. I wanted to go. I was actually on the boat. And then news of the armistice came and they marched us off again. It was all over and I missed it. I wanted to see that war in the worst way. In school. I wanted to make an impression, but I never had enough allowance. I wanted to play football. But I was too slight. I was always getting banged up. I wanted... Yes. What? Monsieur wanted... I forgot what I was going to say. You go ahead and put the car away. I won't be going anywhere. That smug, I told you so. Look, Monsieur. You heard me. Madame does much tonight. Yes. Elle aime bien la danse. We used to dance together. We did everything together. She could drink as much as any man in the room and still be the wittiest, most exciting, most beautiful. Maintenant, elle ne sort jamais avec vous. What? Uh, elle, uh, she, uh, she does don't uh, come out with you anymore. She does don't come out with me anymore. Remember here? Just tell him Andy sent me. Andy? Andy who? Andy Jackson, sir. Moonshine's gift to the nation. Here's his picture. In case you forgot what he looked like. There's another. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. No, I'm sorry. What's the matter? Too few Andys? I'm sorry, Mr. Fitzgerald. But you remember what happened the last time you were in here. Last spring. No chance to repeat spell. Never chew my cabbage twice, as the fellow says. This gentleman is my physician. The eminent French gynecologist, Dr. Louis Pasteur. Famous for having treated Isidore Duncan for athlete's foot. If he could speak English, he'd tell you my health is too delicate to let me do anything but sit quietly on the sidelines and observe the gentle pleasures of your charming establishment. Pack up all my cares and walk. Here we go. Swing it low.
Fitzgerald. Yeah, so what? I wrote the book about the pushy little man who winds up floating face down in his own swimming pool. Look, we're not interested in your pedigree. Oh, well, somebody at your don't... table might have read it. But I hadn't reckoned with the rate of illiteracy in your part of the room. <laughs> you see, that's how he got me. Caught me off balance. Try that again. Gotcha that time, my dear doctor. <laughs> oh, boy, if I'd had that punch ready when that baby came over in the speakeasy. <laughs> well? It'll wake the child. Shut the door, then. Not exactly anonymous. I made you famous. I don't want to be famous. No, you don't. Anyway, that's not me. I am not a girl in a book. I'm not a girl in a short story. I am myself. I want myself back. You give me back myself. You don't want yourself. You don't want to be yourself. You want to be me. No. This competition of 1928. It's not true. That's not true. You had to ride. You had to paint. Now you have to be a famous ballerina. Don't you know dancers start to train before they're 10 years old? You're almost 30. I danced when I was little. I was a wonderful dancer. I will dance again. Oh, you're kidding yourself. Last winter in Hollywood, you said I had no right to say anything sassy about that little old Wombus baby star you were carrying on with. I wasn't carrying on. I never touched her and you know it. You said she was worth more than me because she worked at something. She did something. Well, now I'm trying to do something. And all you can do is pick on me. That's why you're doing it, isn't it? Revenge. It's not the reason. You're punishing me for saying that. You're punishing me because of that girl. I don't want to understand it all. It's not because of that. It's not because I want to be you. It's just I want to be somebody wonderful. So you can love me again. Liar. Oh, Scott, you promised you wouldn't. You cut yourself. He only did it because he knows it's the one thing in the house I care about. You're going to cry now. Please don't cry. She'll never be home again. It's 
Matilda, please. You seem so kind at first. Daddy said, it's wrong. He is wrong for you. And she wouldn't listen. Stop it. Never see what he's done. He's broke her all to pieces. Please, darling. Please don't cry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. There was somebody once. There's somebody now. My wife. No, I was somebody in my own right. They said I was the prettiest girl in Montgomery, Alabama. The prettiest and the smartest. Oh, well, Mr. Fitzgerald was just one of my boats in those days, just one of many. Don't. Don't. But Chelsea, no. I want him. I could do it again if he'd let me. Baby, baby, you haven't lost me. I feel like I've lost you sometimes. You spend so much time on the dancing. I love you so much. Don't you know that? Poor child. You got a handkerchief. There's blood on this. Oh, go for. You hurt yourself.
Tarleton for a haircut and ran into a nice fellow named Bill Knowles. I didn't know you were stationed down here. No, I'm not. As of tomorrow morning, I've been transferred to Texas. Aviation. Hey, that's keen. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted. How long have you been here? A couple of weeks. Found a girl? Not yet. Better get moving, fella. There's four Ivy League second Louis down here for every girl. With any kind of looks and any kind of family. I'm only interested in the best. Calhoun, Goodwin, Hopper. What's that? Three top girls in Tarleton. Haley Calhoun, Betty Lee Goodwin, Mary... Say no more. She number one. Amy Calhoun? Ailey, absolutely. Numero uno. And she's the one I want to meet. Just like that? Just like that. I marvel at your perception, little man. But it just so happens, by the sheerest coincidence, that you are in luck. You are in the most fantastic luck. What are you doing around 7 tonight? Is this her street? Yes. That's she, her soul and patience. You think she'll like me? Well, that's up to you, isn't it? Listen, as soon as the pleasantries are over, you make your excuses and scram. This is my last date with her, and I don't intend to spend it with you hanging around, batting those big blue eyes at me. As to what happens between you two after I'm gone, well, if it weren't you, it'd be somebody else. And you'd prefer your successor to be a Harvard man? At the very least. There's the house. Keep us waiting exactly 10 minutes. It's traditional. I'm so sorry I'm late. Why, I thought I heard you come 10 minutes ago. I mean, um, I'm sure I heard somebody down here pacing up and down. Why, Candy, how are you? Uh, Cammy, honey, I want to whisper to you. All right, then. We'll make it Thursday. That means sure. He's a pilot, isn't he? You suppose he uses those on his plane? Switch on, contact, giddy up. Don't just know your name. Oh, uh, Ailey, this is Lieutenant Andrew McKenna. How do you do? Hello. Andy was at Harvard with me. Ran into him down by the hotel. He was coming this way, so I said, stop in for a moment and meet the Belle of Carlton. <laughs> oh, villain, they terrible. Uh, McKenna? McKenna. Well, if you're Irish, come into the parlor. There's a welcome there for you. How long have you been stationed here, Lieutenant? Not long, about two weeks. I didn't think I'd seen you before. Don't you ever come to the dances at the country club? I haven't. Not yet. Bill and I are going out there tonight. Perhaps you'd care to join us. Well, well actually, Andy has a date tonight. In fact, if he doesn't hurry, he's going to get stood up. Aren't you, Andy? Yes, that's right. Oh, Bill. Must you rush away? He's afraid he must. I'm afraid I must. I'll see you out.
After Bill goes, I'll be sitting here all alone night after night. Uh. And you hush now, Lieutenant Nolan. <laughs> if you'd like to see our provincial little old country club, maybe you'd ask me out there to dance for me. Come on. Good night, yes. Andy. Good night, Nolan. Bill. Oh, wait a minute. Your guns are all crooked. And this stop that. What is you're doing? I'm not doing anything. Whatever it is you're trying to do then, Mr. Smarty. Why won't you let me kiss you? Because I won't. Why? Because you're not sincere, that's why. I'm almost in love with you. Do you know that? No, I don't know anything of the kind as it so happens. If you ever let me kiss you, though, I would be. I know I would. I mean it. You do not mean it. That's just a perfect example of how insincere you are, Lieutenant Andrew McKenna. Why don't you try me? Just kiss me once and see if it's not true. No, you are stop this at once. Do you hear me? I am instructing you to introduce an entirely new line of conversation. You keep your hands to yourself and you talk to me. Go on now. Talk. Well. There's something I am curious about. How come you haven't married one of the local swings? I'm sure you could have anyone you want just by lifting your hand. Well, one thing. I only turned 19 just a few weeks ago. That's not exactly the age of spinsterhood. And for another, I could never marry a southern man. Why not? Oh, don't pretend you haven't noticed. They're so provincial, honey. I don't intend to spend the whole of my life in little old Tarleton. Or even in Georgia, for that matter. No, thank you. I happen to have set my sights a little higher than that. What are your requirements, Ailey? My requirements? What kind of men are you looking for? That's a bit telling. Am I in the running? Now, there you go, being insincere again. Anyway, what makes you think I was looking for anything special? The night we met. Remember? When I started to go? Right there by the door, you straightened out my collar pin. And just for a minute there, you looked at me in a certain way. What kind of way? Well, just for a second. As if to say, are you the one? Are you the what? The one. Are you the one? Oh, Pooh. You did. <laughs> never. You did so. Look, you made that whole thing up. I never looked at you in a special way, Paul. Says you. I was just being kind, straighten out your fine little old guns and see what I get for my trouble. Insults. I'd walk straight to that house and just leave you sitting here. You do, and I'll follow you. I happen to know you folks went to the vaudeville tonight. Well. Well, now. If this so happens, I'm gonna accept that challenge. Come on. What? You heard me. Come on, on your feet, soldier boy. Follow me. You mean it? I never say anything about anything I don't mean. don't mind candlelight. Our great President Wilson has asked us to forego electricity four nights a week so as to conserve fuel for next winter. I love candlelight. I'm going to love you the very first time we kiss. I think that's why I asked you in here. Isn't it? Follow on. Who 
Who's that? Who do you think? Your best beau. He was. Sure enough, always was. I hate him. Who is he? You do not hate him. Don't you ever say that. He's the man I measure every other man against. If I ever meet anybody like him, I just take one look, take off my dancing slippers, and my flirting days would be over for good. Just be him and that man at all. Are you ever going to tell me who he is? He's my brother. Oh. My brother Bobby. Bobby Joe Calhoun. Who was your brother? He died. I'm sorry. It was during his senior year at Yale. He could have had his pick at any college in the whole South. But he chose to go up to New Haven on an athletic scholarship. He was on the track team. Our city? Yes, varsity, of course. He knew he had this infection in his chest. But he kept it a secret so he could run the fall 40 against Princeton. He couldn't let the team down. Did he win the race? That matter, he died. He was the noblest person I ever knew. The noblest and the most sincere. It's our first dance. Come on, McKenna, be a gentleman. I suggest you keep your own counsel, Lieutenant Campbell. Go away now and go away nicely, and you can have a dance later on. Otherwise, I shall refuse to recognize you this whole evening long. Ailey. Come on, I'll shoot. That gives me the creeps. <laughs> oh, he's just a great big old silly. He's always all moping around. Got that little matter straightened out with our supply sergeant, did you? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. I took care of it before I signed out the key. Good, good. I've been admiring this young lady ever since you walked in. I wondered if you might not introduce us. Yes. Yes, of course. Ailey, this is Captain Haynes, my, um, Captain John Haynes. Jack. How do you do? Miss Ailey Calhoun. Would you do me the honor of dancing with me, Miss Calhoun? If Andy doesn't object. No, no, of course not. Then by all means. Hey, Peter. Haynes, Jack. Daily? Mm -hmm. Daily. you to be a Yale man. How could you know that? <laughs> I'm a witch. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Your guns are all crooked. Certainly not. What right have I got to mind anyway? Sure, you're not my bow, after all. Well, you're something much nicer. You're my friend. You're my confidant. That's right. Good old Andy. Come over here and let me confide in you, honey. I mean, well, I can whisper to you without being overheard.
Don't look so grumpy. Horace Camber telephoned me a few minutes ago. I'm terribly upset by what he said. What'd he say? Don't ask me how, but somehow he got wind of Bill coming back here today. And he called me up to say. No, it's too horrible. Tell me. He said that if I should decide to marry Bill Knowles, he was going to climb up 6,000 feet in his little old airplane and... And what? And just shut up the motor and let go. He's crazy. I don't know what to do, Andy. He really frightened me. Well, the best thing you can do is steer clear of him from now on. I never understood what you're seeing him anyway. What on earth makes you think of saying anything in him? What exactly do you take me for? I can't hardly abide the man. I despise him. Then why the hell do you... Andrew McKenna! Then why do you go out with him? I don't know. Because he's so sincere, I guess. He may be awful, but he is very sincere. <laughs> There it is again. There it is again. There's the song that I adore that I heard before on the ballroom floor. There it is again, and it fills me with despair. For the orchestra's playing my favorite waltz. But my favorite to Tom Warren for my platoon. Get in. Are your intentions honorable, sir? No. Farewell, then. Andrew McKenna, you devil! What's the difference? I might be dead in a couple of months. You talk like that and I'll get straight out of this car. I'll warn you. It's true. More than a million of us in France already, and they're dying by the hundreds every day. Read the papers. I don't read the papers. I don't even look at them ever. I don't want to know about it. Gosh. You can't just walk around wearing blinders. Don't you tell me what I can do and what I can't do. There's no man alive has that privilege. You just hush up here. Give me that. Give me another. Look, you got me all upset. Just when I wanted to be most happy and gay. I think you're just annoyed with me for cutting in on you and Bill Knowles. 
Well, now that is ridiculous. If you want to know the truth, I was more than a little surprised that lots of people didn't cut in. The way they usually do. I mean, for my own sakes, did they think I'm already married? Are you going to be? I don't know. I tell you, Andy, sometimes when he treats me as if I were sacred, it thrills me. <laughs> it's like this. It makes me feel all warm and liquidy. Haley? Hmm? You're gonna tell me you just this minute climbed out of your little old airplane. Ailey, did you hear about this afternoon? What? Horace Canby crashed. He was killed instantly. You mean he was killed? Yes. They don't know what the trouble was. His motor just... I don't know. Get Bill Knowles out here. Tell him she wants to go home. Andy? It's all right. Andy, he's don't talk. dead. Don't he's I dead. have to think about it. I don't know what to do. Here's Bill. Andy, you must never, never tell anybody what I told you about Camby this afternoon. What is that? I mean, what he threatened to do? Of course not. Oh, Andy. I heard all about it. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Bill is here. Just lean on me, honey. Andy? You've got to be very, very brave and try not to let it break your heart. <laughs> Come on, there's a taxi over here. Good night, Andy. Good night. You poor fool. Oh, Andy. That was all she said. But what she meant was, isn't it too curious for words that I have this disastrous effect on men? Of course. I should have made one of those fine moral decisions that people make in books and despised her. On the contrary, I don't doubt that she could still have had me by raising her hand. Now, you promised me a Roddy Watermelon party. Now, I'm very... Listen, will you? This just came in from Bill. Bill. Bill Knowles? You do remember Bill Knowles. He just happened to introduce us. What about him? He's arriving this afternoon on the one o'clock train from El Paso. So? He's coming to see me, Andy. He's got a three-day pass, and he's coming to spend all three days with me. I can't just go off and leave him in the lurch. I didn't know it was serious between you two. Well, we said it was serious. Well, is it serious? Well, I reckon you'll have to ask him that. All I know is he's coming. He'll be here in another hour. Well, that's just great.
Howdy. They've been sewing every Susie and After her performance outside the country club, Ailey made it all right by saying wistfully, I know you think it was terrible of me to think of myself at a time like that. I mean, I know his crash was an accident. But you have to admit, after what he said to me that very day, it was just such a shocking coincidence. I swear, your silence speaks volumes, Andrew. I don't suppose I'll ever be able to convince you. Ailey Calhoun is wearing a one-piece bathing suit. I call that truly uncouth. My mama says nobody but a fallen woman would wear a one-piece suit in public. Well, if you ask me, it looks like nothing more nor less than a pair of her daddy's old BVDs cut down to size. <laughs> oh, kitty. Hush now. I believe Earl's getting ready to dive again, and he said this one's dedicated to me. Who's that? Who's what? On the diving board. I can't tell. He looks like a streetcar conductor. Oh, that's Earl Schoen. Earl who? Schoen. S-C-H-O-E-N. Schoen. What sort of a name is that? Don't ask me. He just came in from the fourth. All the officers are up from the ranks. I mean, it's hard to tell if they come from any background at all. They all have weird names with no vowels in them. No vowels in them? No vowels at all? Just consonants. <laughs> you mean like knit script? <laughs> uh, come in, Rupert. <laughs> script? <laughs> he really does look exactly like a streetcar conductor. Oh, 
I believe he's coming this way. Where's my transfer? I just know he's coming to collect my transfer, and I can't find it anywhere. Lordy, how embarrassing. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Oh, hello. Earl, isn't it? Uh-huh, Earl Schoen. It's big rip. How you like my girl? Your girl? Yeah, the one I was telling you about at camp. Remember? I said she's no Jane or anything like that. Real society girl. It's her over there. Little brunette. The one in the shade. Real society girl. Kid is pressing black hand society. Yeah. Who's this little lady? Ailey, I'd like you to meet Lieutenant Schoen. Miss Ailey Calhoun. Hi, Ailey. How do you do, Lieutenant? Call me Earl. Say, this is really swell. You and me were the two best-looking girls in Tarleton. What do you say we all have dinner together down at the hotel someday? We'll talk about it. Good deal. Well, back to the old grind. Oh! Well, Will! What do you think of him? Well, he has a ready wit, back to the old grind. Do you like him? Like him? What is there to like? Well, he is good looking. Eggplant's good looking. Marzipan's good looking. I personally can't abide either one. Well, take a tip from your old friend and confidant. Don't go getting involved with Earl Schoen. He's no Yaley. No Harvard man, God knows. Hold on, Moses. I just this minute say hello to the man. You got me engaged to him already. Impossible. You're engaged to Bill Knowles, aren't you? Emma. You don't see any rings on his hand, do you? Did you promise to wait for him? I promised to write to him when he was overseas. I see. I'm hot. You going in the water? As soon as I'm done on this side. Uh, hurry on, then. Here. of you to go out and deliberately try and take a man away from another girl. I thought you considered yourself above anything like that. You care for him, you certainly oughtn't to belittle yourself in front of him. Hey, that was fun. Listen, uh, I'm not trying to beat Andy's time or anything, but I sure like to see you again. What about Saturday night? Sunday afternoon, then. I'm busy. Well, what about next week? I give you a ring on the phone. I'm very busy at the Red Cross all this month. Bye. The Red Cross. That's a new one. I have to do my bit, don't I? Can't spend all my time on the dance floor. I thought you handled Kitty Preston very neatly. She'll never hold that young man. He wants somebody new. Apparently, he wants Ailey Calhoun. Oh, charming. He could give me his ticket punch to wear like a fraternity pin. What fun. Mother ever thought about it like that coming in the house. She'd just lie down and die. Too early, am I? No. I walked around the block so I wouldn't be. 
come along the parlor. Do I look all right? Fine. Wait a minute, your guns are all crooked. person who's looking for B1 and didn't I see you eyeing at a number of pretty girls in there this evening? You can't blame me for that, can you? It's the war. The war and all this youth. It seems like there never was so much love around. Everybody wants in on that. Everybody's looking. Just that the right people don't always see each other at exactly the same time. That's the way. Scratch a cynic and all this romance and scratch a man. You're not romantic, of course. May. It's the last dance. May I have the last dance, May? <laughs> Sir, you may. Oh, watch my purse, will you? Haley Calhoun, that bohawk. Doesn't make sense. Oh, well. Granted, he's damn good looking, but my God, Andy, he's stupid. He's uneducated. He's practically illiterate. I guess she knows what she's doing. I don't think so. Ailey's bright in a lot of ways, but I think she's very naive about what we're like up north. She sees this clod in an officer's uniform, and I'm afraid she imagines that he's just like us. That he's some kind of gentleman. <laughs> Look, she's only distracting herself with him. I hope you're right, because otherwise she's riding for an awful fall. Don't sit here brooding. Come and meet a couple of nice, uncomplicated dudes. <clears throat> Markham. Sally Carol Happer, I'd like you to meet a fellow officer of mine, Andy McKenna. Maybe our last date together till the war's over. I just gotta have something really special to wear. Ailey Calhoun, I think you are plum crazy not to want to think Albany. Well, let me have another look in the back.
Now, this here is one of my latest fall arrivals. Pony swan lace, all hand decorated. Jeanette? What's the matter? Who's that uh, curious looking woman over yonder? Where? Friend of the TikTok lunch man. Mm -hmm. Bad news. That's Loretta Levison. Do I know her? You wouldn't be likely to know her, honey. She's nobody anybody like you is ever likely to know. She looks like nothing more nor less than some kind of pale old harlot. Well, judge not, lest we be judged. I reckon the good Lord had something in mind when he made women like Loretta Levison. One thing is, as long as these soldier boys got somebody like her to go to once in a while, that means less demands are going to be made on the decent girls in this here town. Now, just you hold this up. You and me. I believe she's leading him in here. What's the father in you, Ailey? Well, I, I, I gotta go. It. Isn't there any other way out? Well, what about your new thought? I think she's sore about something that happened downtown. The butler says she's had to tell me she's not home. I mean, it's a darn funny thing. After all, we made this date one a week ago. Good evening, Oliver. Evening, Mr. McKenna. We're calling on Miss Calhoun. She and Lieutenant Schoen have an engagement this evening. Miss Haley ain't at home, Mr. McKenna. Yeah, you see. Oliver, you tell Miss Ailey that I'm here and I want to speak to her alone. Well, I don't know how I'm going to tell her when she ain't at home. What happened downtown anyway? It was nothing. Just some dumb little incident. If you ask me, it's pretty silly of her to carry on like this. They say she don't want to see that other gentleman about nothing, never. She said, come in if you like. I'll wait in the car. But if she's not out in five minutes, we'll go with that. I can pick up another date on the way. You're a charming man, Sean. Five minutes. Mr. McKenna. Hello, Andy. Seems like I haven't seen you for ever so long. My company's been out in the rifle range all week. Has he gone? Now, Ailey. Now, Ailey, now, Ailey, he spoke to me, you see? He lifted his hat. He stood there not ten feet from me with that... that horrible woman, and when he saw me, he raised his hat and he spoke to me. Ailey, it's our last night. Our company ships out for Camp Mills tomorrow morning. Earl did arrange for this little party in the officer's mess tonight. You went to quite a lot of trouble. Well, I can't help that. I never want to see Earl Schoen or ever hear him again. You sure? Completely sure. How could I ever trust him again after this? How could I ever believe in his sincerity? Oh, I wish I knew what you mean when you talk about people being sincere. Well, in this case, it makes no one mind whatsoever because I have decided I am never going to see that man again. Never. Never in this world. Okay. Okay, good. If you want my honest opinion, that's the best decision you could possibly make. I'll just tell him. Isn't he awful? Isn't he just terrible? Hurry up, get your cape. Andy's turn to make a toast. Andy? Andy? Well, I'd like to drink to the South. Here, here. <laughs> to her friendliness, her hospitality, her beauty. Most of all, to her beautiful ladies. To the ladies.
Our detachment started for Camp Mills the next day, but I didn't go to France after all. One cold morning, we marched aboard a transport with steel helmets slung at our sides, and then marched off again. There wasn't any more war. I had missed the war. This place is a ghost town, isn't it? How long have you been waiting for your discharge? Since November. Since they shipped us back from Mills right after the armistice was signed. Really depressing. And all the local boys coming back now. See them all over town, some of them with crutches or an empty sleeve. Have you seen Ailey? I saw her last night. And? I told her I was on my way home. I asked her if she'd like to come up north next week and stay with my family. Meet my friends. Is she coming? She's waiting for somebody, but it isn't me. I know. It's the first time you ever saw me out of uniform, isn't it? Well, what do you think? Nice to see a little color again, isn't it, after all that darn cocky? Notice the match? Look here. Purple socks. <laughs> and that's nothing. Where do you see what I got in there? Up home, I'm known as a pretty sharp dresser with a pretty sharp eye for the ladies, of which you, little lady, are the doggone number one. <laughs> Stuck in the old monkey suit, huh? One thing will let you out anyway. Three more days. Well, this is a lucky coincidence running into you. I got a new job up home. Really darb. Of course, it's only to tide us over till I can see some easy money. But the thing is, as soon as we're settled into a little apartment in New Bedford, we'd both like you to be one of the first people to come up there and visit us. Well, that sounds really darb. I don't know what Ailey said or how much her grief weighed against her stupefaction. She acted quickly. Three days after his arrival, Earl and I went north together on the train. Well, that's the end of that. She's a wonderful girl. She's too much of a highbrow for me. Nah, I guess she's got to marry some rich guy who's going to give her a great social position or something. I can't see that stuck-up sort of thing. You and I saw it getting on up ahead. What? Two wonderful looking Janes. All alone. There they are. Now, don't turn around. What say we uh, mosey up there and buy them to lunch? I'll take the one in flowery hat. Andy. There's one thing. How do you suppose she knew I used to work on a streetcar? I never told her that. Search me.
six years while I finished at Harvard Law and built commercial airplanes. Ailey Calhoun was scarcely more than a name on a Christmas card. Something that blew a little in my mind on warm nights when I remembered the magnolia flowers. Occasionally, an acquaintance of Army Days would ask me, what became of that blonde girl that was so popular? But I didn't know. Andy? Andy! Oh, I came back, you old thing, and you came back, I knew you would. <laughs> Ailey. Oh, Ailey. Six years. Hush, this is Georgia, honey. Don't you know we got witchcraft down here? Make time stand still. You feel so good. You feel just the same. Do I look just the same? Better. <laughs> Not so bad for an old hag of 25, hmm? Prettiest girl I ever knew. Well, it is certainly clear you haven't changed even one little bit, Mr. Andrew McKenna. How come? Still just as insincere as ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ailey. Don't go get no sentimental on me now. I'm still the Bella Tarleton, you know. I haven't retired my dancing slippers yet. Ailey Calhoun's gonna keep you hopping while you're down here, sugar. You better know it. The watermelon parties and the barbecue still go on nonstop. And as for our little old country, but well. I won't be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too. Life's really worth living when we are murdered. But I tell you, nothing's changed. Everything's changed. I don't know any of these people. I haven't seen a familiar face all evening. <laughs> you gotta move with it, time, darling. I suppose. <laughs> I never exactly loved him, or I, I would have married him anyhow. Wouldn't I? It was impossible. Of course. Oh, how the Yankees did deceive us poor little southern girls on me. What's happening? The last dance. generation on the dance floor with less dignity than the ones I had known, but none of them were more a part of its lazy, feverish essence than Ailey. Yet somehow, her wild animation, which even now called enough men around her to rival the youngest and freshest, was itself an admission of defeat. Just where she had lost the battle waged behind the white pillars of her veranda, I don't know. But she had guessed wrong, missed out somewhere. It was hours later, tossing about in my bed in the hotel, that I realized what was the matter. What had always been the matter. I was deeply and incurably in love with her. 
I told her so the next afternoon. No, I couldn't marry you. I don't love you that way at all. You don't love me, you know you don't. I, I didn't mean to tell you, but it so happens I'm going to be married next month. You're not even announcing it because we've already done that twice before. Who is he? Man from Savannah. You know, I couldn't ever marry a northern man. Are you in love with him? Of course I am. Of course I am. What are you trying to make me say? Andy. Whatever got into you, you devil? How could I possibly ever settle down with anybody who knows me as well as you do? I'm too vain for that, honey. I don't want to be understood. I want to be worshipped. And you're afraid that nobody who's on to you could really love you, is that it? On to me? <laughs> what an expression. I mean, it has to be uncritical worship. Isn't that why you feel safe with men like Candy and Earl Sean? Don't. But isn't that what you really mean by sincerity? Don't try to know me too well, Mr. Harvard graduate. My southern pride won't allow that. I told you, I, I was vain. I don't think you're all that vain, Ailey. Deep down somewhere, I think maybe you don't like yourself very much. And maybe in a lot of important ways, you tend to sell yourself short. What nonsense. Now, you really are going too far. I'm only trying to say that I think I have a better opinion of Ailey Calhoun than you do. Then keep it, darling. I want you to think well of me. I want to know that always, forever and ever, even if we'll never see each other again, that wherever you are, you'll always remember me as somebody. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I'll be heading north tomorrow. So soon? Do you have to? I think it's best. Well, then we must do something very special with what's left of the day. Yes, there is something I'd like to do. What's that? Right out to camp. <laughs> but there's nothing left there, honey. I don't care. Turn right when we get to the crossroads. No, left. You won't find a single thing, Andrew. The contract is tore all down. Is this the place? I'm not sure. It could be. If the company street ran along here, then my barracks would have been on the left. And the officer's mess where we had the party that last night would have been over there. No way. It seems to me it was much farther on out than this. I'm not sure. Whatever are you looking for, darling? My youth. Your what? My youth. Can't hear you, honey. Did I tell you they're gonna fix up the old race car? Tartan's getting quite doggy in his old age. It's Andy's turn to make a toast. Andy. I'd like to drink to the South. Here, here. <laughs> to a friendliness, a hospitality, a beauty, and most of all, to a beautiful lady. No. Upon consideration, they didn't look like the right trees. All I could be sure of was this place that had once been so full of life and effort was gone, as if it had never existed. And in another month, 
Ailey would be gone. And the South would be empty for me forever. Wrong, honey. You're looking at me like somebody you never expected to see again in this world. You stop it, you hear? You made me feel down like spooky. I know they told us this old house was supposed to be haunted when we rented it. I never thought I'd turn out to be the ghost. You didn't just get rid of me in your story, did you? Uh oh. If I'd known I was working that close to the nerve, I would have recommended laughing gas. <laughs> Never mind, you've done that before lots of times. That's the best part of being a writer. Whenever things get too much for you the way they are, you just change them to the way they should have been. Don't stay out here in the cold, you'll take a chill. Seems like no matter who you start out writing about, it always turns out to be about us. Poor Gufo. I reckon you think if you write the story often enough, maybe sometime, some way, you'll have a happy ending. Crazy rhythm, I've gone crazy too. 